Good afternoon, it's Nicholas from Gandor Gaming, and I bring you guys my Warlord Zero and Sanji deck profile for you all today. Uh, this is the original blue-green Sanji leader, if you are a Zoro main. But if your favorite character is Sanji and you are an actual Robin main, then you know in the history of the One Piece card game that this is not the original blue-green Sanji. This is actually the second blue green Sanji because today's deck profile is on a forgotten leader that being the OG blue green Sanji from OPO2 uh, most people know this leader because of the brand new one and basically write this one off as absolute trash but if you allow me to cook with you all today I think I could bring up something spicy and something really fun uh, maybe not the most competitive deck in the world but definitely a very fun very cheap a leader that might actually take some games at your local so yeah let's get straight into this so i'll do a future deck profile on the brand new leader uh Roro, Zoro, and sanji himself but today we're just focusing on our sanji fans because this is the og leader and i actually never did a deck profile on this leader and i figured well most people don't even know this leader and when was the last time someone on youtube updated this leader I checked, it's been like six months. So I figured why not make an OPO6 version of this deck and put my own spin on it. Uh, I think I this deck is very, very fun and cheap to build uh, because his whole effect. And if you don't know, his effect is basically when you play a vanilla on the field and you have three or less monsters on the field, that vanilla's cost is reduced by two. Uh, it doesn't actually reduce the cost of the character by two. But when you play the vanilla, it restands to dawn. So, for example, if you play, let's say, a Perona, well, this is a four cost character for every other deck. But with your ability of blue green Sanji, this is a 2k 6000 vanilla, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, I think blue green Sanji is one of those forgotten leaders that if someone cracks the code on, will actually become a meta threat one day. I think this is one of those leaders that a lot of people just wrote off because they read the first part saying a non-effect character and the fact that he came out so long ago in OPO2 that most people just saw him as just a bad leader. Like, when was the last time anyone's actually tried to break this leader? I, I think it's been a while. Now, I'm not going to say that my list is like, I finally cracked the code on this leader because to be perfectly honest, for a simple effect of just like reducing the cost of a, of a vanilla monster, there's actually some intricacies to this leader and different play styles you can do. Uh, there's film versions of this deck where you play the film cards because some of them are vanillas and you can cheat them out with some really cool cards. And then basically just have a film worse version of Uta. But there's also versions of this deck where you play like the five cost law blocker and the gimmick of that deck is that you want to kind of like cheat the vanillas from your hand onto the field by bouncing up actual impressive monsters. And then like add your Dawn back to your hand and just keep swinging as a very aggressive like toolboxy red green law deck. But I decided to go for instead my pure blue uh, punk hazard theme deck. Now the reason why I call it a punk hazard deck is because most of the cards are navy or have association with the arc punk hazard uh there's only like one character that has no relations to the punk hazard arc and that would be pudding because uh you can't play a sanji deck without pudding so you just gotta have bear with me there but uh let's actually go straight into this so first things first we're playing two ten drop kaido now i was very tempted to go the easy route and play the nine drop sanji because nine drop sanji is basically like custom made for this deck right you play a nine cost and then bam, you play a vanilla. And then the vanilla, uh, what's it called, gives you back to Dawn. So really you play nine cost Sanji and a vanilla for seven Dawn. That kind of sounds crazy. But ultimately, I felt like it wasn't enough pressure. So I went ultimately with 10 drop Kaido. Uh, the other reason why I like 10 drop Kaido is because blue green Sanji is actually one of the more aggressive blue decks in the game. I think blue Dolphin is still more aggressive, but I actually think... Because of Sanji's ability of playing cheap vanillas and then just using the leftover Dawn to put it on himself. In the early game, he can attack for like 10k 
while placing a five cost character on field, which is pretty, pretty cool. So I like the idea of like having the aggression with Sanji and then ultimately playing 10 drop Kaido as like a two of, so you don't brick on it. And it's like, oh, this is a win more card that draws us four. Not to mention it is a 12K beat stick. So it helps you clear bigger monsters like the big moms of the world. Uh, next, we're playing four John Giant. This is a pack filler card from OPO5. And it actually finds some love in this deck because even though he does say eight costs a thousand vanilla, which in most circumstances would be a bad, bad card, because of Sanji's ability, this is actually a six cost 10,000 character, which is actually crazy if you think about it. And if every deck can play a six cost 10,000 character, I think they would do it just because of how low cost it would be. But because it's a blue green Sanji you're playing, a lot of people just write off the vanillas. Same thing goes for Draco Mihawk. Draco Mihawk, uh, he is a Civil War into the Sea, and he's an 8 cost, uh, what's it called, 8,000 attack character. But because of your leader's ability, he's really just a 4 cost 8k character, which is pretty insane. Same thing goes for Virgo. Virgo is a 3 cost 7,000. If you look at it in aspects like this, these, this leader actually makes the vanillas actually worth it. Unlike leaders like Red Uta, who's like, oh, I just give an extra thousand to a vanilla monster. This card basically lowers the cost of playing a vanilla. Meaning, you can still play non-vanilla monsters, but also play big beat sticks. It's kind of like a really cool Ooga Booga deck that can like kind of spread the field pretty easy. can like spam a whole bunch of vanillas on the field while also going aggressive in face because you're playing such big monsters. Now, because you're playing uh, Vanillas, uh, we're also playing the Pacifistas, which is four costs, 6,000, but because of Sanji's effect, this is actually a two cost, 6,000 character, which is pretty insane. Uh, I figured because we're blue, uh, this engine was from OPO1, and I felt like, why not bring it back? I'm playing the Pacifista engine, if you are a blue Dolphin player, you know this engine. Basically, you play the four cost blocker uh, Pacifisa with the four cost 6,000 Pacifisa. And you also play Bartholomew Kuma, who is a blocker who says when he dies, you get to play one of these Pacifisas from hand. So you either get to play a four cost blocker for free, or you get to play a four cost uh, 6,000 for free, which is pretty, pretty solid. Uh, we're also playing four Setamaru. Now, Setamaru is just insane because he can cheat out your blockers really, really easy. The only downside to him is that he is very easy, easy to be removed because he's a three-cost character. So, a lot of black decks can easily kill him. But you kind of want to play him in the middle of the game when you have the ability to use his effect. Because his effect is uh, when you put one dot on him... You can rest two, so basically Dolphy's effect. You put one, rest two. And you can spend some of a Pacifista monster, so one of these eight cards from the deck, which is pretty, pretty cool. And that's basically the gimmick of this little engine I'm playing right here. Uh, we're also playing four Mochi because honestly, this could have been any three cost 5k vanilla. I just felt like since we're going kind of the navy slash blue route, I might as well use the Punk Hazard cards and. It's a three cost baby running around with a candy. Why not? Uh, we're also playing four Monkey D Garp 2K because he's just a 2K that is Navy themed. So that's really the only reason there. Uh, next, we're playing the Pudding Package. Where we're playing four of uh, the two cost pudding. This is the only new card we're playing that came out in OPO Structure uh, Deck 12, I think it's called. Uh, we're also playing two of the normal pudding that most people know from most blue decks. And then finally, because uh, this is blue, we have access to all the removal. We're playing three Red Rock because we do want to remove big cost characters. And we're also playing three Raging Tiger because we also want to remove uh, your opponent's six cost characters. And they're going wide on you. You can, this card just limits them out of the game, which is pretty, pretty solid. Uh, this is a very cheap deck. This deck probably would cost you maybe 30 bucks to build. And over ten dollar on sleeves. Like this deck is super cheap, like really ridiculously cheap. The most expensive card is the two cost uh, the ten drop kinos, and even there you could probably cut them out and play just four puddings. 
So that's really it for this list. Uh, I don't think it's the most perfect list, especially since we're only playing the blue color. But I kind of want to go with a different way to play this deck than most people do. And I kind of went for my own version. This is a very fun deck that you can experiment with. Because all these cards are vanillas, they're really, really cheap. So you could probably figure out some really cool ways to expand and build this deck the way you want it. Maybe you don't want to play the Pass the Fisa Engine. You want to play more vanillas. Maybe you want to play the green cards, like the Trafalgar Law Blocker. Maybe you want to build the film cards. It's all up to you. Ultimately, this is a very fun, cheap deck that if you want to teach your friend the importance of Dawn and how to play this game, I highly recommend this is a very easy deck to learn that has nuances that can help more professional players play this game. I ultimately think this is the really, really cool starter-friendly leader. And I hope Konami and Band... Well, I keep saying Konami because I'm a, I'm a Yu-Gi-Oh player at heart. But I hope Bandai hopefully doesn't forget this leader and just keep him in place with Blue, Green, Zoro, Sanji. I hope one day this leader has its time in the meta to shine like every other leader. Anyway, hope you all enjoy. Don't think it's stupid. Expect a Zoro, Sanji deck as soon as I have that built. Anyway, see y'all next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>